did do a lot of research and I found a really great video to replace in this and I'm going to leave a link in the description because I highly recommend checking it out. I'm just stepping my way through it for the first time with home ingenuity. So there's a big snap ring here. I'll take it, pop that out like so. And then the center hub supposedly slides up and now and next there's a bigger snap ring right here and this is where we need that that pressing set up I feel we can accomplish this with a little different setup there's a plate that goes behind this transmission in between this transmission and the engine but what I found is I end up with a nice template I'm going to make my own flat plate by using this as a template and we'll be utilizing these two and these two just like the forward tool that I see if I make any changes to it guys I'll show you right away but I'm going to do this off camera and then I'll just show you what I made up when we're done so I'll be right back at you I'm just going to give you a quick overview of how we're going to make up these tools. Uh, you can pause at any time, look at the measurements. Here I'm checking the outer bore size of that tower because we need something to go over top of it. In addition, that inner input shaft has to fit through the center. In this picture, I'm measuring the cross spread of the clutch plate bolts and now the opposite direction as well. This is going to be for a template. Here I trace that outer plate onto a piece of quarter inch flat steel and this is that template I made up of the clutch bolts. Now I'm just taking, I'm going to center punch them after I centered it on the plate and now here I went and I transferred and punched them. After that I trimmed it down and folded the edges to give it to make it more rigid. This center bolt as you can see I have a sandwich with two nuts. I'm going to take and weld the one nut to the one side that way that's going to be my pusher. Here I'm making a, a bolt with a chamfer. This is so it's self-centering. Next I took a total of eight nuts. They're eight by 1.25 pitch and we mocked them up on a set of bolts to square them up and then we welded them together. You'll see what this gets used for later. Next I had to make up two sets of pushers. I know in a video I say schedule 40 but I believe it was schedule 80 stainless steel. The first one I made was a, a one inch stainless nipple I think it was three inches long and that gave us an outside of 1.32 that allowed us to put it to the center of that tower the outer input shaft and that allowed the baron to pass through just it actually worked out real well the second one we made was an inch and a half very similar setup this gave us a 1.5 inside diameter that fit around the outside of that outer output shaft and allowed us to push down on a snap ring. As you've seen, we machined off the one side threads and uh, squared it up. On the opposing side, we put a cap and countersunk for self aligning. Okay, so what we got to do next is push down on that snap ring, the retaining ring. It's pinched in there. So we just got to push it down just enough. We don't want the snap ring to bottom out on the opposing side. So, like I said, I'll put the measurements and everything, how I machine this stuff and, and whatnot. I also have a chamfered pushing bolt. So, let's get everything started. I should have got different bolts for this, but this will work. At this time, I, I can't justify the investment buying the puller however I'm starting to see more and more of these come in and I just been sending them out to get done but they're they're not covering most of these under warranty so you know, that's why I do this stuff I'm not making much money if I'm if I'm giving work away center. I'm just going to get a measurement inside just to make sure I'm square. What I'll do later on is I'll make up a set of standoffs and tack all them. I 
believer there. Alright, I'm not going to go any further than that. I'm going to check it. Okay, it moved. We're good. I'm going to have to pick up the right pair of snap ring pliers today, but I have this modified one that appears like it should be able to... You gotta watch your eyes when you do this stuff. Okay. So that's that. Okay, so it's not that easy to pull out. So now you'll see... Next piece we made. It's, it's nothing more than a piece of stainless schedule 40. I believe it's one inch. Mike got to be damn near perfect. And it will uh, allow the inner race to come up past while we proceed on to the next step. Next is where these pieces came in that we fabricated. These are going to be, well, you'll see when we get to that step. However, like I mentioned, we have this one inch uh, Schedule 40 stainless steel. This is machined down on a lathe, and then I put a center starter bit in there just to, just to give something for the, the pusher to center itself on. And it's just a little bit smaller than the outside perimeter of this collar. So the inner race is going to be able to slide over top of this. However, if it gets off alignment, it's going to have a collision. So what I found is a piece of three-quarter inch heater hose fits almost snug. And once I put it over top of the input shaft, I put this there and it virtually centers it for me with very little movement, if any at all, that will interfere. Okay, now we have our nuts and our center adapter installed. I'm going to want to put that on there like so. Now those nuts that we welded together earlier have essentially given us a way to put these bolts onto that clutch pack. As I remember I told you before, this is camper. And if you look down in the center, you'll see See if I can get this to go. It doesn't feel like I'll need a ratchet. But oh, there it goes. Definitely off. Okay. Definitely something, something very odd going on there, huh? I don't know if any of you Ford guys have seen that. Let's take a look inside this case. You 
you see that. It's left of the clutch disc. It was just smoked. You can actually smell it. So is that like a, a failed presser plate? It almost appears as if it's been like this for a long time. If you look at the, the wear on this pressure plate, you go up around here, you can see how it's different. Once you get down here, it's like this has barely ever been touched. And then as you get up to the higher ones, you can see how the, the width gets bigger, and then down to nothing. Get down here. It almost appeared like it was stuck on that pin, but it's not. It's not the case. So I'm not going to dwell on it too much, but I think it's hard to deny the fact that, that wear is different. I believe it's been like that for a very long time. Even if you bring this up, it's not even the same, same length. Unless it's all pushed back. I'm hoping they're clocked in a way that you can't mess them up. So we're going to set this off to the side. I don't think those rub marks are supposed to be there either. I have to look that up. Had some help here, so I took advantage of it. And uh, now we're at a much more comfortable level. So we're going to take and remove the two actuators said he had this one back to the dealership once before and I believe they did the seals and replaced the clutch pack at that time but we'll know more because I, I believe the original seals if I recall correctly from that video were black so we'll, we'll be able to tell as you can see, it's dry. Same thing. Next, we're going to take and uh, remove all four of these. And we're going to keep them together. And then you also have two more, four more torques, two on each. over here, same way we pull them out. Same thing with this side. Let's set these over here on the bench. I blew the case off before I brought it over to the bench. You see that clutch disc is 
the remains are all throughout. So now we're going to take and remove these three containers. We're going to see if this seal is black or orange. As you can see, it's, it's the newer seal. It's the orange one. So we're going to stop right there tonight. And we'll see if I can line up some parts and get this thing back together. Like I showed you before, it's quite obvious that we have an issue going on here with this clutch pack. You see these two are much lower than the rest of them, as I showed you before. In addition, you can see the, the contact points and all these other fingers. And then we get over to these fingers and it's like non-existent on that corner and barely touching. So we know we definitely had some kind of issue going on there. Whether that was related to the slippage, I truly don't have that answer for you. However, what I do have is a new clutch pack assembly. In addition, we got the two seals we'll be replacing as well. As we can see, the lower seal, the bigger the two seals, is going to be quite easy to remove and replace with just this um, standard tools. However, where I'm going to run into problems is getting down to the other input shaft seal. But I think we're going to manage one way or another. But with these seals, as you can see, you have a cavity inside and it's metal. You can pop through this with something like a seal puller, penetrate through that metal and, and yank it out. What I'm going to try to do is actually use a, a screw with this type of slide hammer that I made up for pulling dents. As you can see, I just machined a few different ends. I'm going to start a hole with the pick. Like I said, I'm not going to go too deep. And we're going to take and try to get a screw. Start in there. Just like so. I'm going to take my slide hammer, put it on here. Pull that seal. Making sure, I'm gonna make sure everything's spotless down in there. Make sure no dirt fell. A little piece of, a little piece of something there. I want to get out. Okay, just that little piece of. A little piece of seal that fell down in there. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to find something that fits the outer perimeter perfect. It won't put me down flush. It appears there is a lip that it will bottom out on. We just want to go flush with it though. Just one more look at the method I used. Screw with a slide hammer. I use that quite often. If I can't get into something that's in a hole like this. I got a seal puller, but it's just, yeah. Good luck with that one. Comes with grease on it already, so I'm not gonna mix anything else with it. We're just gonna make sure it stays clean. started down in there for this next step I'm disappointed to say that my battery died in the camcorder and I didn't even realize it and I didn't notice it until I went to edit the video however to seat this seal in what I did I found a PVC 
pipe reducer bushing with an inside diameter of 1.5 I believe and a fit over top of the input shaft and I was able and the outer circumference matched up exactly to the outer perimeter actually a little bit larger than the outer perimeter of the seal and I was able to use that to seat the seal in perfectly by using a piece of pipe as an extension and tapping it down. Now the fun part. So I'm going to do something very similar with that seal. But before we go pulling it, I want to take a measurement. And how I determine that, just taking closer to the way, set it to zero. And this time we have our depth. We're going to run that down. Fill touches. Measuring a couple different spots. We know how deep to make it from the ledge of this tower. How are we going to pull that out? Well, I don't have the proper tools once again. So, what I do have is a punch. Well, a pick that'll fit down deep enough, start a hole in it, put a, a longer screw in it, and pull it. Hot dog. The main thing you want to make certain of, guys, is that you don't go too deep. And you want to get dead center in that. Try to get as center as possible and don't go down any more than like 3 16 of an inch. Okay, so now as we're preparing for the next seal, the snap on 13 16 seems to be the correct fit. What I want to do. Lock it there. Now I'm going to take this socket. I want to put a mark there. We got to make sure our socket goes deep enough, and it does. And here, coincidentally, it's just before the socket bottoms out. But we know we don't want to go that deep. We just want to go to the very edge of that marker that I just put on there. I'll put a couple. Once we start approaching that black mark, we got to stop just shy of it. Okay, so now to put the seal on, I just want to show you what the old one. It's a tight fit around these splines, and the splines aren't smooth. So I really don't want that new seal sliding against that. So I got this piece of shim stock. It's three thousandths. I trimmed it, rounded the edges. I'm going to have to trim it down a little bit. And trim it down the depth of the socket. I'm going to take some emery cloth, make these edges perfect. You can feel right there is the top of that shoulder. So I'm going to take this socket. Okay, I feel now that it's starting to go. Over top, and that shim stock is out, and we're clear of the spline. Now we 
we're just kind of tapping in until we're we're close to those black marks, if you recall. Okay, we're good. And we got this this piece that's going to go in next. I'm going to I'm going to make sure everything's spotless. Oh, as spotless as you get it. This one didn't have any leakage. So it's not heavily contaminated with oil. I was almost tempted on leaving those seals in it. And we have our three bolts. Clean all these pieces as good as I can get them. Now we're just gonna make sure your dowel pins are in place. Another thing I picked up is that you want to have one of these sets of lines lined up with the opposing lines there. We don't want to tighten it yet. I actually want to leave it loose. Next one in. Same thing. Remember, leave it loose for now. Okay, while they're still loose, you want to take in, for alignment reasons, Start tightening everything down. Okay, and like I mentioned before, make sure the lines are lined up. Torque these ones to 14 foot pounds. I got them torqued already, right, but Now at that point you can take and pull out the actuators. We got the small tube of grease that comes with the clutch kit from Ford. And they want us to put a little bit on the splines. And just like the video that I referred to during this whole installation, I'm going to put a little bit on the shift forks. tell you guys this video is much better it's got the right tools and I highly recommend following following his procedure so 
We're just gonna. I don't want this stuff slinging around later. So. I'm just gonna put small amounts in there and wipe off the excess. We're gonna smear this in. And then right around here where the baron goes, we're gonna put a small amount of trans flute. I just got a small amount of fluid. Okay, so next we're gonna install this support tower. It only goes in one way. You see the once you get it in the right way it'll, it'll fall right in. Okay, you want to make sure the washers stay stay good, and you don't want your tranny moving at this point. So if you need to block it in any special manner, do so now. Because from the way to make this sound, this is one of the more important steps. All right, so next with the new clutch, we're going to take these double nuts that we fabricated. before guys we want to make certain that everything up here is ready to go and stable the Z washers are centered we're going to take and remove this the center spline collar you can see there's a mark we'll line that back up later As you can see here, the clutches are, the springs are retaining it down in place. And that's one of the pieces right here that I found down inside that tranny. I think that was tearing up that bottom collar. Looks like one of them clips. This must be the new revised setup. So now we're going to be really careful. Try to do this without shaking it. There she goes. You can see she's down in. The tower's up halfway through the barn. So everything's going just as planned. Take and remove these. All right, in this next step, we're gonna use this to push the center race back down as we press that baron onto that tower. We wanna stop as the tower just starts coming out because then we wanna put our retaining ring back on. However, watching the video once again, I noticed that there's a little, like a notch cut out of their pusher and I see why that's like a little window that they can see in there and see how far down they pressed now we have a window too to the top ledge now. Okay, 
Okay, I think I'm down far enough. I gotta be careful there. I fly off of there. However, now I'm gonna press down against that snap ring until it just clips in. Get a snap ring just went into its groove. I'm just going to give it a little tiny bit more. Right there. So if you can see, that snap ring is now in its groove. So I just simply went down, went down, went down until I heard it just go click. And then I just went just a tiny bit more. Okay, so next we're going to reinstall the center hub. You can see it has a mark here. It came with the new clutch kit. Index mark here, here. And then you had that plastic nub inside. Okay, so it's just done like so. New retainer ring comes with the kit as well. And you want to put it evenly in between that mark. Because if you look inside, you have that piece of plastic that'll keep the retaining spring from going into its groove. In addition, you want to keep the ends of the retaining spring like midway. with a screwdriver. You can see that's fully seated all the way around. Okay. So now before we move the tranny at all we gotta release the clutch discs because as you've seen those metal bands that were Retaining that pressure plate, I guess we'll call it, disengaged. We're going to have to release them bands. You should really go out and get the proper tool for this, guys. It's a, it's a spline, like so. I measured it up and felt it. It's really close to 6 millimeter. Now, I won't be catching every spline, but I'll be catching every corner and it slides in really good. I had to take a file to it just a, just a tad and I had to grind the, the nub. It was a like a ball socket. That wouldn't work. So we got that slid in there. Now we're going to turn it counterclockwise right around 14 times until we hear the clutch disengage. So we're right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I'm pretty sure we got it 14 times, as they called for. Okay. Now we're going to move on to the other one. Same thing. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, 
10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I did it 14 times, but I heard it disengage. I'm just going to let this unwind. It's a little bit of... I never see this. So far, so good. Click, 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 click. Now that we have everything reassembled on the transmission, it's time to start putting it back in the car. To be honest with you guys, I'm not going to have time to cover every step putting this back in. However, it's pretty much reverse of the way we took it out. And I'll, I'll stop, pause, and cover anything that I think needs to be highlighted during the installation. Pretty much when I'm putting it in, it's just going to be me struggling, getting the bell housing aligned in addition to lining up the torque, or not torque converter. It's very similar to a torque converter. However, the, the bolts on the clutch pack, the studs, have to line up and go through these holes. And you see how this one hole has this yellow dot near it, and we have this yellow paint next to it as well. If you come back over to the transmission, on the clutch here you'll see this triangle. We're going to take and we're going to mark this, just to make this so we can see it a little better. It's a little dark here. We see this yellow dot. You see where someone has yellow paint here already? That's where that stud's going to line up. And that's pretty much a balanced location to uh, match up the, the flex plate to the clutch assembly. So you can see the training is up in place. You have the two top bell bolts started in. And those are the ones I started first. And here's how I did it. I know you guys are going to. You're gonna laugh at this, but I didn't have the proper training jack for this transmission or for a transmission for a lift. I got a small one, but it wouldn't feel good underneath it. So I actually used a chair, a very well built stool, I should say. And I've used this for, uh, for doing trainings actually quite a few times. And I blocked it to pretty much match the bell housing. So I, as I let the vehicle down, I just kept on moving the stool around, making sure the transmission wasn't hitting anything on its way up. Once I got the two top bell bolts within alignment, I started them in. However, I didn't tighten them up. I just started them in like a full nut's worth. It still left the gap between the bell housing of about three quarters of an inch. Because what we don't want to do is force that new clutch pack has the studs on it. You've got to make sure they're lined up with the flex plate and in the right orientation. And as you remember, my yellow mark was over on this side. So I didn't want to go through and turn the motor and everything since we had everything where we took it apart last and that nut was lined up with the last one I removed. So what I did was went directly across, marked the tip of that one blue. That way I could look up in here and align it and then pull everything in tight once I had pretty much alignment pins I was using the bolts as. Then I just stuck my hand up into the starter hole and then I could reach back with two fingers and move the clutch pack until it looked like I was lined up perfect and then I just pulled the transmission in, lined them up and then we just ran these in by hand until they were snug that way nothing falls out. Right, I'm going to take this inspection camera and try to give you guys a shot of what it looks like up in there. You see the bolt stud? 
Yep. Here. This is best shot. Let me see. Well, you can see it's through its hole, and I have the blue dot on it. So I know I'm 180 out from the opposing one, so it's lined up right where it has to go, and we're through. You got to make sure that stud is lined up with those holes, otherwise you will mess things up. Very important step. One important note here, when you go to tighten the nuts that attach the flex plate to the clutch, you got to follow the sequence. As you see, it's marked in a clockwise rotation, one, two, three, four, five, and six. However, when you turn the engine clockwise, it's going to go in the opposite direction. So you're going to torque one, five, and three. This is a two-stage sequence. First stage, tighten nuts one, five, and three to 106 inch pounds. Then on the second stage, tighten all nuts to 18 foot pounds. Two bell bolts, got them in. Snugged up by hand, along with the bottom ones. We're gonna take and reinstall this upper transmission mount so we're supported. As you can see, it's got to come up a little bit in addition back. So we'll just start by putting them two nuts in place. Now keep in mind, I still have the engine and everything supported across the strut towers. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to raise this up a little bit, get it off that stool. right where we want it. So now I get them two bolts. I can see they were right there before with the old marks. At this time I can take and uh, remove this carriage that we made. Alright, next I'm just going to button everything up underneath. Axles, ball joints. Okay, so I pretty much have everything back together. I went ahead and got on a roll and I had the whole top together. I got the battery back in it. Everything's pretty much buttoned up. However, I got to put fluid in the transmission. Uh, dual clutch transmission fluid. I had to buy it directly from Ford and be prepared to pay like $40 for two quarts. So we want to make sure, of course, that we have the drain plug tight. It's right underneath here, eight millimeter. And, uh, she's tight. We drained that earlier. So pretty much this procedure, if you're changing your fluid, you would you'd follow the same steps. You got this drain plug, break that loose, you can start draining it right away. And then you come up here and this is where your your fill plug is located. And of course that lower the subframe is bolted up right in the way. But what I found I used a just a regular eight millimeter Allen wrench and I was able to get in there like so, break it loose, and then you could just use the ball socket portion of it. To pull it the rest of the way out. We're gonna fill it until it starts running out. And um, what I'm gonna use for that is essentially just a, a funnel with a flexible neck on it. And it shouldn't take any more than two quarters. There's that one. Shouldn't run out of steady stream. There it goes. Now I know I'm full. Yeah. Because I know I can reach in there. Okay. 
Teach yourself a torque wrench and torque that spec. Just a little piece of mind. Now it's going to take some cleaner. Well, it's just about the moment of truth, guys. I reached out to a fellow YouTuber to make certain I start this prior to. Prior to um, having the, the touch points relearn, because uh, I have a guy that's going to be coming here, Mobile Tech from Ford, that's going to do the relearn process and any updates that are needed. And he said, Yeah, I can make sure it starts. That way I can do it before he gets on site. So, everything's back together up top, air cleaner. Box battery, training mount, training's full of fluid, shifting linkage cable is hooked back up, all electrical is plugged back in. I'm not going to try putting it into gear or anything, I just want to make sure it makes certain it starts. I guess we're ready to start it up. All right, let's go get it into the on position. Ready. I'm gonna close the door and hold the brake. Okay, I have to rewind a little bit. As you can see, she's behind me running. I just had a mobile technician, a Ford specialist, stop by and relearn and reprogram, well, update uh, the latest calibrations in the PCM. He did the TCM learning, adaptive, adaptive learning, uh, trains, ran sensors, shift drum, clutch touch points, and uh, every update that was available to the current one thing he did mention was, luckily I saved this tag. Clutch kit came with this service tag. It's a newer style clutch. So he said, luckily I had this number and I didn't lose this tag because he would've been screwed. He wasn't even aware of it. But uh, luckily when he went to do the updates, it asked him for it. I did pay close attention while he was doing it because I am gonna purchase it the IDS software. This way, later on, I could do this stuff myself. He did a great job, and right now it's at the point where he, at the final steps, they told you to let it run for like 20 minutes, shut it off for like an hour or something, let it cool down, and then start it back up, let it get up to operating temperature, shut it back down, and then check the fluid, and then take it for a nice long ride. So that's what we're waiting for now. I thought his pricing was reasonable, to be honest. It, he ran into a couple little hiccups. He also updated the, the PCM and the TCM. He did everything in, in one shot. It took him a little, took him close to an hour with that little hiccup. And plus he came to the shop. So it was like a, it was like 175, somewhere around there. So I don't know if he was doing me a favor, if it would be more than that. Generally, I, it was my first time having a service tech come here because of something like this. And to be honest with you, I don't know if this clutch pack would have worked. I don't know what would have happened if I didn't have all this done. Because it was quite the process, to say the least. Uh, and it's an updated clutch. It's not, it said, in the, in the description it said it must be done. So, and I, that was also the service tech at 40 said, if you put this newer style clutch set up in it, you gotta relearn it. You gotta go through these procedures. And they actually referred this mobile tech uh, so it's VTech, V-E-T-E-C-H, and they're out of Red Hill, Pennsylvania, 18076. You know, it's a timely process, and I had a great experience with him. I was going to throw up the camera, but I didn't want to make him feel awkward. Or, uh, to be honest with you, I want everything to go. I wanted his focus to be on, on getting this right. And after 
watching the, the videos on YouTube, I kind of took my own personal notes and made sure that those steps were followed. Thank God for that video. And like I said, I'm gonna reference it in the description. And I highly recommend you checking that out if you wanna learn how to do this 100% correctly. Buy the book with the right tools. Right now, it's working good. I've, I've let it run for over a half hour. I shut it down, pulled it off, started it back up, put it back on the lift, checked the fluid. And I'm just about ready to take it for a road test. Goes in and out of the gears smooth. Uh, there's no rough engagement right now. I haven't took it down the road to see how it shifts. What the mobile tech suggested to me, he said a lot of, a lot of dealerships, they place this in the glove box. They tell you to put it on the transmission. He goes, but the best place to put it is actually by your, your tag here. And place it right there. He said in his, his years of experience, it doesn't get missed that way. And uh, the next technician will come in to, to verify the model year and month and see that tag. Okay guys, we've got about 15 miles on it so far. And um, got myself on a nice back road that was relatively straight. Took it nice and easy, let it shift through all the gears. And uh, this was after the whole warm-up procedure. As you can tell the thing. I don't have a mount for this camera, so it's probably shaky. So far everything feels nice and smooth. Um, I don't feel any concerns whatsoever at this point. This thing's shifting beautifully. I'm gonna put a put a few miles on it. I'm gonna Maybe travel to Quaker Town or something. It's about a 20 minute ride. Grab a bite to eat, 20 minutes back. Make sure everything's good. Put it up on the lift one more time and make sure we have no leaks. After this job, it just goes to prove to myself that, that I could do it. I could pull it off. With a little bit of ingenuity, uh, some fabrication, that took maybe an hour. Saved me whatever that tool is. I think I priced it out around 1200 bucks, somewhere around there I could have grabbed them for. And we, we did, we accomplished pretty much the same thing that those tools were gonna accomplish with a little extra detail being applied because we didn't have the stop set. Now I could have easily put a, a shaft collar around those sockets and set the depth and just press them, press the seal down until the shaft collar hit. I thought about it afterwards. Would have been a great addition to that tool. But it's something we can add later. And it's a learning process. But all that being said, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I know we, we didn't cover everything, but I wanted to cover some of the things and what I go through to uh, make my customers happy. Save them a little bit of money in the end and in the process, gain knowledge myself. And those tools will be in my shop forever. So as long as I'm able to keep them around, they'll be around. So for the next one that comes in, hopefully I'll be able to find all the pieces. I'll be able to do the same task. And at that time, I'll be able to do the program myself and share that with you guys as well. So if you guys are uh, interested in any of these shirts, I had these ones made up for myself. Throw out some ideas. I would like to like to get my name out there a little bit more. You know, I've been I put a lot of work into this over the years, and I hope it shows. But I'm progressing with time. I know. I slack on the videos, but it doesn't mean I'm slacking on work. jobs is a lot. You throw in a third one. Put a guy over the edge. This channel is something that means probably more, I can't say more than the garage, but more than a lot of things that I've done and that I do. But uh, it's an accomplishment.
accomplishments. It's something that never built to the, to the goals I wanted to set, but it's never too late. some schooling coming up. I'm going to start attending more classes, educating myself. It's a self-investment. And uh, on-the-job training is great. Like you've seen, I just went through, this was on-the-job training. I watch YouTube. I learned from our fellow Ford Tech. Great channel. And uh, I implemented his instructions into this video. And it, it pulled me through very successfully, I believe, man. This thing you see, we've been driving for quite a while, stop and go traffic, and it's hot out. And not a shutter, not a slip. That's enough of me rambling on for one day. Just wanted to let you guys know I miss you. And I hope you're all doing well. I appreciate the support for those of you that stuck around. And I hope you come out of this experience learning something. It's a beautiful day.